It is currently 4.30pm on the 19th of May 2020. I'm Ed Sutton and it has been exactly 204 days since I've last recorded a video for PES 2020. Yo, what is good guys? I'm Ed Sutton. Welcome back to a PES 2020 video. Yes, I know it's been a hell of a long time and I do apologize. I, I massively apologize. You know, there is a reason why I was gone for so long and I want to let you guys know. So one, um, my wife was pregnant. Two, um, I lost my job, um, a job that I had for like five years just went like that. It's finished um so i had to try and get over that find a new job get my head like relatively in the right space and then things were going great then i you know i'll sort out my health that was another thing i needed to sort out and then my wife gave birth to a beautiful little girl now we have the coronavirus yeah it's been a while is what it is but i'm back i promise this time i'm back and i'll be making pes 2020 videos so for those of you who don't follow me on twitter I've kind of dropped like a new thingy, my bob. <laughs> yep, that's right, Bloodline, um, which is, I want to say a brand new series, but there are, you know, there's a lot of streamers who have been doing or are doing something similar to what I'm doing, except I'm putting my own kind of twist on it. And whether that be, you know, David Fish, uh, Verminator, uh, precision, Wesatron. Basically, kind of like what I've done is taken, you know, I've kind of like dipped my hands in different pots and just gone, this is it. Bloodline. Bloodline is a, a brand new series um, which I'm making. I know we had, you know, Grind to Glory and stuff like that, and that came to a really aggressive kind of halt. I guess, again, I apologize for that as well. For me, as much as I didn't mind that series, things were just becoming very, very dry. You know, there was no, you know, the lack of content. And for me, all it felt like was just getting, you know, the best players that I could or just dealing with what I had, playing games, going up the division, which is, don't worry, that's still there for Bloodline. Don't worry, I'll, you know, we'll get to that. And, um, you know, and for me, it was just becoming very, like, tiresome and, like I said, dry. With all the personal stuff going on, it kind of was a good time to take a break. What does Bloodline exactly consist of? In order for you to understand Bloodline, you kind of need to understand my background story and where I'm from and who I am and... Uh. Just shy of 28 years ago, my mother and father met. And when they met, they had a special hug. I don't know why I've done that. And with that came me. Now, for those of you, my bloodline consists of English, Portuguese, and Polish. I'll show you the squad that I have, and I'm gonna explain to you exactly how things work. Some of you are probably gonna try and watch this video and think, oh, cool. We're gonna see some gameplay today. You won't see any matches today, but bear with me because in the next episode, we will be going into matches. This is more about like the team build and the rules of Bloodline, just so you guys understand exactly what it is that we're building here. Like I said before, where my nationalities are three different nations, those specific nations are gonna be taking place specifically in the squad. And as you can see here, we have Portuguese, English, and Polish. You're probably wondering as well exactly what team strength we're going for. And the team strength that we're starting with is going to be quite low because the kind of players we're going to be using, they're very low rated players and they're white ball players. So the next question is, how, how do we progress? How do we move forward? First things first, the division table is back. Starting from division 12 and we're working our way up. This is what Bloodline is about. We're in a division because I don't know what Pez has done to the divisions in this. There is no divisions and two, the ranking system's a load of tosh. Next thing is the way they upgrade is, it is very specific. For example, with every episode that I drop, you guys are gonna have the opportunity to kind of change the team. In my trailer, I posted that there would be a polling system. However, something has slightly changed and I've only found out about it today. And that is from June the 10th, YouTube is taking away the polling cards within the video editor. So there are three ways that we go about this. The first one is Twitter. I run a poll, you guys click. The next thing is you guys can type the specific 
area, whether it be forwards, midfield, defense, goalkeeper. And the third one is the community tab. Now, I'm gonna try and keep this brief as possible. What YouTube doesn't tell its content creators is in terms to get a, a community tab, you need to have at least 1,000 subscribers. I'm hoping by the end of the year, we can reach at least 1,000 subscribers. That would be phenomenal. The next thing is how does the polling system work exactly with the players in terms of upgrading? Well, it's gonna sound complicated. I'm gonna try and make this as easy as possible to understand because in my head, it makes sense. But when I say it out loud, it's more like, okay. The easiest way that I can explain this is that right now, every every player here is a white ball player, which means that there is an opportunity to upgrade. There is a, a randomized will. What I would do is, if for example, we pick in the comments or the polls, you know, we want to change the midfield. So I take all the players right now, white or bronze, because we're not going to go, I'm not going to put silver, gold and black and then let... It doesn't make sense to do that. It, the way this needs to work, and I think the best way it would work is that we do things progressively. And I'd like to do it like that anyway. If, for example, Bellingham, we spin the wheel and it lands on a white ball player, it just means that that player is up again to potentially be replaced. Bellingham changes and it lands on a center mid bronze ball. It means that that bronze ball is now locked. That bronze ball, it can't be switched for a, a white ball center mid. It has to be either a center mid bronze or a center mid silver so that's how that works the next thing is you know how does it work after matches you know do players get trained do they get skill cards do they get position cards yes all of it after every match the way it work is we would check the overall rating of you know what they got within that game now whoever got the highest rating in that game whether it be ballo gun chalabar or Boggle, the opportunity, one, to get trained up, two, to have a skill card. And for some of you, you, you might be thinking this is a bit too complicated. I don't know about this and stuff like that. After a while, watching a few episodes and the way things work, it will make a lot more sense. I promise you. The next thing was obviously the team, you know, who do we pick and things like that. I have already gone through all the players who I feel like are specifically fitted for this particular squad. Again, going by nations, we also had to go for a manager. So, you know, we went for Gareth Southgate. He's one that I feel like is roughly comfortable with. Balogun up top. I really wanted diversity. I really wanted, you know, players who I felt like was gonna really fit the squad. And on top of that, what's really, really important is having players that cover a lot of positions. For example, Elliot here. Don't get me wrong. I played with him before. He's a he's a brilliant white ball. He's a really good white ball. However, very limited. Fonseca, he can play left wing, right wing. He can play centre forward as well. So we've got a backup there. Bellingham is the next person, centre mid. He can play attacking mid, defensive mid. Centre mid is his main position. Left mid and right mid. We don't have that. Don't have to worry about that. Rafael Macho, he can, he's a prolific winger. He can play left wing, right wing, and he plays attacking mid. Chalabar, brilliant. Defensive mid and can play centre back. We've got Brown who can play centre back and left back. Diogo, centre back, right back. Guay, can't really do too much. Just a centre back. Boggle, who is right back, right wing center back that helps right going to the subs bench obviously it's always good to have a backup goalkeeper we've got Wally as well or Walu we'll call him Walu we've got Walu in here as well it's just a center back Sessa Young who is brilliant not I don't know what he's like to play with but he's brilliant in terms of the fact that he can play left back right back and center back I know he's an offensive fullback but it it works no matter what it's really helpful to have that kind of player Stanny as well um, Anchorman, always good to have an anchor, Anchorman. Felipe Soares, who can play attacking mid. Obviously, as a classic 10, he should be able to play um, attacking mid. We've got Karamaka Dembele, who can play left wing and right wing, attacking mid as well. And we've got Curtis Jones, who can play centre mid, attacking mid, left wing, who we all know who Curtis Jones is. He was very, you know, he was very impressive in the Carabao Cup and things like that. The other thing as well is looking at the player cards, because that also makes a big difference as well. Two prolific wingers, a goal poacher, a box to box, prolific winger, though, if I really want to change Camacho for Curtis Jones. Yes, he drops slightly, but he's a whole player, so it works. 
we've got Karabakh Dembele again prolific winger um, classic number 10 who can sit who can go into these positions and command obviously for Chalabar you know offensive fullback be a left back and right back um, he hasn't got a playing style as such which I don't I don't mind sometimes it's good to have that but sometimes it's also good as well because sometimes Pez's coding is a bit weird like players have a certain card and sometimes they just don't stick to what they're meant to do and then obviously we've got two offensive goalkeepers obviously looking at Gareth Southgate's actual tactics you know it is counter-attacking short pass wide maintain and support range of around that in the middle defensive instructions is all out defense which means you know once the possession is lost like it says here my players are going to drop back in the middle obviously stops all the passes coming through the middle conservative which means one player is going to pressure and then hopefully the player that's being pressured the opposition is going to release the ball too early and i can pick up on it defensive line is quite high and the compactness is again in the middle, so it's fine. Um, advanced instructions I used. I did use defensive on Bellingham. Pure reason being is the defensive line is quite high, so I definitely want that player who can sort of like, I want a player who can sort of situate in the middle just in case, because look, having four men go forward is still more than enough. So for me, it's nice to have that player who's just sort of situated in the middle and isn't gonna sort of, veer too far off also the other thing is the fact that because we're a counter-attacking team if there's another team i come across who's also counter-attacking you've got so many players who have pushed up you know you can have a big gap in your defense and it's good to have that extra man behind just in case counter target i've put it on rafael camacho reason being is because he's a prolific winger now the cards are massively important i'm just going to quickly show you an example as to why if i put a whole player there and i've got counter target Right, let's just go to playing stuff. A player who looks to make runs into the opposition goal area when their team is on the attack. Certain forwards stay in the vicinity of the opposition's box rather than dropping back to help defense. A whole player is already making those kind of runs to go into the box. So to put counter target on a whole player for me personally seems completely pointless, especially if your player is already doing that. If you want to ensure that your player 100% does that, then stick counter target on him you know because sometimes with the player cards and especially with the advanced instructions what some people don't realize is, is that they go oh i see a player doing that so i'm just going to copy it you need to you know and i do want to thank king comic for this because you know he taught me a lot about cards and advanced instructions and really and truly what's necessary and what's not also what you need to do is play in your mind how you think it's going to play out when you stick this kind of advanced instruction on your team so if i'm putting counter target on a whole player i feel like i'm already wasting the card because a whole player has already got that job of running into the opposition's box again attacking i've got two offensive defenders do i need to put attacking fullbacks no full swinger no yeah tiki tacker just slows down play false nine for a goal poacher is completely pointless centering targets you could there's no harm in using centering targets to be fair, what you really want is to look for a player who's got like cross specialist, pinpoint crossing or early crosses um, and also have a centre forward that's got heading because that will help, especially if you're going to be using centering, centering targets. False fullbacks purely just if you need more men in the middle. But again, my attacking is in the middle, so most of my team is going to be doing that kind of work anyway. Pointless. Wing rotation. You've got prolific wingers. Their job is to stay on the side of the wing. Pointless as, as well. Defensive. Wing back. If you don't want to be an absolute scumbag, because I know there's people who do this, and yes, if you do do this, you are a scumbag, you're going to have to face facts. Some people come to the 55th or 60th in-game minute, just start passing the ball around the back until the 90th minute with a one-goal lead. Please don't. It's just an incredibly muggish thing to do. I know people, you know, they say like, you know, but it's like real football, you do that real football. Real football doesn't last 10 minutes. So try and respect the opponent enough and this depends if you're a white bencher or you hack people down or you lag cheat then by all means hold the ball at the back if you're winning but if you're having a good fair game of football don't be that person who holds the ball back and just plays like a scumbag because it is a scumbag move you only get certain minutes in the game try and have a fair game at least yeah so going back to this with wing back if you've got wingers and you know you need more people in the middle to drop back then put wing back on um deep defensive line i've got a high defensive line there's no point swarm the box um personally i'd only use this tactic if players are like consistently cross spamming and i think that's realistically it um right now we're on you know 84 team team spirit before gareth southgate was on 
91.46. What the point four? Even this, what one sixteen point six nine? It can someone explain to me what the point six nine is even about? Like, what actual significant difference does that specifically make? Having 120% of familiarity makes no sense at all. So I did put about 15 on Gareth Southgate. Um, I think we got no, sorry, he was on 84. We got up to 116, which is fine. Um, originally, a lot of these players were on 40 and 30 um, affinity. I put, I had 15. I've put 11 of tactical training. Um, and yeah, we're currently up to 84. I know you guys have just seen that and gone, well, why don't you just stick the rest of the four on there? In case we get new players come in, I'm gonna need tactical training anyway. So there's literally, there's, there's no point me putting more on. And that's, to be fair guys, that's pretty much the episode. So yeah, that's it. Like I said, guys, you know, it's not a gameplay video as such. Um, you know, it's more about like building the squads before going into the, to the next three matches. Um, so yeah, so I just, like I said before, I just wanted to, you know, tell you exactly what Bloodline is. Divisions are back. You know, there is a, pro a progressive upgrade system. There is also, you know, a tactical training and skill trainer system as well implemented. You know, you guys will also have the choice. Oh, do you know what? I literally forgot to miss out one of the biggest things about this. What I forgot to mention was this. Within this, if I'm lucky, because we all know how Pez plays, if I'm lucky and we get to five consecutive wins, you guys, yes, you, are gonna have the opportunity to pick a player and a position to change. You know, I don't wanna go mental and someone goes, yeah, put in a legend or yeah, put in, you know, a featured card player. I, I don't wanna do that. I want things to be progressive. So the cap I feel like is really good right now especially and who knows in the future you know the cap could change the cap for now will be a silver ball player it's to you know apart from just the polling system i do want to give you know more options more freedom you know to you guys who are watching because at the end of the day you know i make this one for myself but two for you guys to watch it's content you know and i'm hoping that this is content that everyone can hopefully enjoy so you know like i said five consecutive wins you guys will have the opportunity to change any player in any position for a player of a silver ball rating i think the last thing i want to say literally before i go is i do want to thank you know everyone and anyone who streams or makes content on pez whether it's on twitch or youtube i thank every single one of you because watching you guys definitely 100% inspired me to go through and make this kind of content, this kind of series. If it wasn't for you lot, I probably would never have thought of something like this. I know it's, you know, it's a bit like, you know, it's just taking snippets off of other people's ideas and stuff. But personally for me, especially you guys, because obviously, you know, I, I do want to make content that people can be happy with. I do want to make content that, you know, you, th you look at it and go, oh, that's different. I've not seen that on YouTube before. So, you know, I really hope that you guys can like follow the, jo the journey and enjoy it and, you know, appreciate it for potentially for what it will be, you know. So I know I've been gone a while. It's been 204 days since I last made a video on Pez. It will be back to zero once I drop this video. And I hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys aren't following me on Twitter, then do. If you guys aren't following me on Twitch, do. And if you guys aren't subscribed already, do. Let's hit this 1,000 subscriber mark at least by the end of the year. That would be, well, I, I would love that. But if we can hit this 1,000 subscriber mark by the end of the year, that's a massive achievement for me. You know, let's build a community. Let's have some fun. You know, I'm back now. I promise you, I'm going to keep up with the content. And yeah, I've been your boy Ed Sutton. Take care. I will see you for the next episode and peace. <music>